Hello, and welcome to the video run through for the game Dig by Wonderhouse Creative. This is a two to four player game for ages. It's a combination of action cards to be, move your character around the dig grid in order to uncover cards. At the beginning of the game, you will choose from one of the four ologist cards. These are the roles that you have to choose from. Geologist, an astrogeologist who is looking for space specimens, an archaeologist, and a paleontologist. In this role, when you're digging, you can keep any find of value, but you will be rewarded extra points for anything that is in your field. For example, with the geologist, you'll see that there is a G in the upper right hand corner. When digging, look for this G on other cards, such as the emerald. This means that this is a geological find. If a geologist finds something in their field, they are awarded a field grant, and that find counts for five more points. Remember that this field grant isn't transferable, and it cannot be stolen, and if the find is lost or stolen, the field grant goes back to the pile. If the geologist were to find these dropa stones worth 20 points, they may still keep the find, but because it doesn't have their letter, it has AG for astrogeologist, they will not be rewarded, rewarded a field grant. Once the roles are chosen at the beginning of the game, they are laid face up in front of the player. Players then also choose a color of a meeple to represent them as they move around the board. To set up, you want to have a pile of your field grants ready. Your action cards should be shuffled and placed to the side. You'll need to place your compass card in the top corner and then create a grid of the numbers one through six. You'll then place all of the dig grid cards, which are the square cards, within the grid in a six by six grid. Please note that in the game there is included one extra keep digging card Please take this card out now. It's just there in case you ever lose a card. Starting with the youngest player, all players will select one grid card to place their meeple on, and that's their starting point for the game. Two players cannot occupy the same card. In the action cards, you're going to find an assortment of useful cards. The first are the dig tools. There's shovels and pickaxe. A shovel allows you to uncover one card. A pickaxe allows you to uncover two adjacent cards. Then you'll have compass cards. These show the direction that your meeple can move and you can play them in order to move your meeple around the grid. Some compass cards just have one direction. Some have two. In that case, you can use either of the directions, but you may only use one of the directions. You'll also have different action cards of things like a raider who's able to steal a find from another player. On your turn, you can choose one of the following actions. So the first one is that I could play one dig tool and I could dig the card that is underneath me, if there is a card underneath me. So if I play this to the discard pile. I get to dig this card, keep my meeple there. This is an investor. It's worth 10 points towards my total end goal. And anything I find, I place face up in front of me. Now, the other option would be to play a direction plus a dig tool. You can also play multiple directions. So if I wanted to move to this card, I could play south south dig. When we're looking at directions, we're always going to use the compass card, however it's placed on the table. If you want to be true to real life, place the compass in such a way that north is actually pointing north. So if I play south south dig, I can move south south dig. And I get a saber tooth fossil worth 20 points. Yay. If I didn't have a dig tool, 
I am able just to move my meeple around with my direction cards. So perhaps I want to move west, I would discard that one. I'm choosing west, not east, and I would move here, and that would set me up for the next turn. The other option is to play one of the action cards. This is a raider. All of the action cards are detailed in your instruction manual. And the raider allows me to steal a find from another player. Now, I see over here that the archeologist has an emerald worth 15 points and it's a geological find, which means that if I steal that, which I'm going to, I'm gonna place it in front of me and I now also get a field grant for it, so it becomes worth more because it's in my specialized field. Now, the archaeologist does have an opportunity to protect themselves. If the archaeologist had a night watch card, which is this flashlight right here, they could play it in response to my raider and protect themselves from the raid. Then my card would be nullified it doesn't count as their turn and we would both pick up from the action card pile to replenish any missing cards. At the end of your turn, you should always have six cards in your hands. And once the action cards run out, you just take everything from the discard pile, reshuffle them and add them back into play. Let's look through some of the other action cards. The helicopter allows you to move your meeple anywhere on the board. You're also allowed to play it with a dig tool in order to dig on that turn. This is an infrared machine and it allows you to sneak a little peek at any two cards in the dig grid. So you can quickly take a peek and decide if it's somewhere that you would like to go in the future. The pickaxe, as I mentioned before, allows you to dig two adjacent cards. The spy allows you to look at an opponent's action cards and take one of them. So you can ask for their hand, take a little peek through and decide, oh, I want the broker, so I'm going to steal that. They would then replace the missing card from the draw pile. The broker allows you to trade, do a forced trade. The opponent doesn't have a choice. So you can choose one of your cards, one of your finds, and it has to be a find, to trade with them. So this is often handy in situations where you have a low value find and you can trade it for a high value find that's in your in field. You're in your specialized field that would allow you to get extra points. Within the dig grid, there's going to be cards that are basically a wasted turn. So keep digging means no luck, you didn't find anything. Or there's going to be advantages and disadvantages. Something like the floodlights says, you have enough light to work late, take another turn right now. Replenish the cards in your hand before you take this turn. So you get to have a double turn. Um, there's other cards like a double dig, which allows you to dig two cards, etc. There's also some hazards. A snake bite will cause you to miss your turn. Quicksand will cause you to put one of your finds back in the dig grid, etc. All of these cards have the action right on them and they should be done immediately when you find them. Now, another important thing to know about this game is that when we're counting our moves in terms of moving our meeple around the dig grid, we're only counting the cards. So in this instance, I want to dig this card. All I need to play is an east direction because when I move, I'm only counting the cards, not the empty spaces. So by playing an east with a shovel, I can move here. If there's cards surrounding me and I want to move north, I can only move one card north. Unless, of course, there was no card there, I would be able to play one north card and move to this card here. Anytime the game mentions an adjacent card, like in the instance of using a pickaxe, you are allowed to dig 
two adjacent cards. So if you were to move west and dig, I would dig this card, quicksand, and then I would dig an adjacent card. Now remember that we do not have to count any open spaces. So an adjacent card to where I am right now would be this card, or this card, or this card, or even this card because we're not counting empty spaces, we're just counting adjacent cards. So this will happen with the pickaxe. There's also things like the double dig, which says that you're entitled to uncover an adjacent card. So you would pick any card that's adjacent, ignoring any empty spaces. Once you decide which one to dig, so maybe I want to dig this one, I move my card, my player, to the last space that I uncovered, and this one was another find. Play progresses in a clockwise fashion around making sure that you do your one move, always replenishing your action cards at the end of your turn, and players need to keep track of their points accumulating in front of them. So the game ends at different point values when a player reaches a certain point threshold. So in a four player game, player a player needs to reach 80 points first in order to win. In a three player game, a player needs to reach 100 points first in order to win. And in a two player game, someone needs to reach 120 points first in order to win the game. Once that threshold is achieved, the game is over, that person wins. So that's a quick rundown of how you play Dig. It's a fun game where you're working individually in order to build up your point values and explore the board, but there's also lots of interplayer interaction as well with stealing and trading and thwarting each other in terms of racing to a Dig card, etc. So it's a lot of fun. We hope you enjoy it.